In this video I'll describe how to make a brisk sextant using plain glass microscope slides. I'll discuss using partial mirrors, also called beam splitting glass, in another video. But even if that's your objective, I suggest you start with plain glass, as if you're anything like me, it's a fiddly and sticky process and you're unlikely to get it right first time. It's much cheaper to practice with microscope slides than it is with expensive beam splitting glass. You'll need a box of microscope slides. This box of 50 cost me less than $10 on AliExpress. You'll also need some epoxy adhesive and masking tape, and I find it easiest to do it with some aluminium baking foil and a laser pointer. You'll also need a dark filter for which welding glass is the most inexpensive option. Welding glass shades 10 to 12 are suitable. This kind of glass is used for arc and plasma welding. Welding glass used for oxyacetylene is generally not dark enough for observation of the sun. Alternatively, you can use solar filters designed for looking at the sun, but they're considerably more expensive. I do not use welding glass as part of the sextant proper, so we'll return to it in a future video. You'll probably want to cut the glass. I have found a diamond cutter to be easier than a tungsten carbide wheel on glass that's this thin. These are not expensive and could be bought on AliExpress for a few US dollars, but note that I've seen them advertised at huge markups of over $100 by Western resellers capitalising on their buyers not knowing what the real value is and assuming that they're valuable because they contain a diamond. The aim is three pieces of glass stuck together with fixed angles like this. There are several ways to achieve it, but I've only found one of them to be satisfactory. That may, however, be because of the brand of adhesive that I've used. Irvin's original design uses glass bar spacers like this so that the reflective glasses touch at one end and are spaced by the bars at the other. This is a wedge of two microscope slides constructed in that way to illustrate the problem with this. This film was taken through the sextant of a stationary suspended light bulb. You can see that as I move the sextant up and down the position of the virtual image changes slightly. That variability in the angles of virtual images is unacceptable for a sextant which we require to be precise to within at least 10 and ideally 5 seconds of arc. The brisk sextant doubles the angles between the glasses so angles must be consistent to within about 2 seconds of arc. Microscope slides are only 1.1mm thick and even slight forces will bend them by several seconds or even minutes of arc and therefore it must be set up free from external forces. Epoxy adhesives are not supposed to swell or shrink on setting. I've used a couple of brands and they both seem to shrink slightly because the angles of deviation of the virtual images are reduced at either end, showing that the glass is distorted like this, which I presume has arisen because of adhesive shrinkage at the points arrowed during setting, resulting in the shape below. I therefore rejected this method of construction, but if you find a brand of adhesive that works well with it, then let me know. A second option is to glue the glasses on the sides like this. I have tried this, but unfortunately it also leads to distortion of the glass. The best solution I have found is to glue the glasses together only at the bottom edge, leaving the other edges free, so that adhesive contraction cannot put any strain along the length of the glass. It's still not quite perfect, as you can see from this example, but that's because the cheap microscope slides are not perfectly flat. And you may have to try a few before you find three in the box that are good enough. After a bit of experimentation, I found this to be the simplest way to construct a sextant. Take two stacked microscope slides and wrap a piece of masking tape tightly around one end like this. Then open the slides like a book and run a line of epoxy down the glass at the taped end. Then close the book using a spacer to keep the desired angle and let it set. Keep fingerprints off the glass as far as possible and clean the edges to be glued carefully. I find it easier to do this with a solvent like ethanol but soap and water also work. When the adhesive has set, take the masking tape off and test for consistency of image position. If satisfactory, then repeat the process with a third piece of glass. I discussed the theory of determining the angles between the glasses in my previous video. 
If you choose a ratio of angles of 2 to 3, then the virtual images will be equally spaced below the sun, but this leads to a problem of image collisions. The image resulting from six reflections in the narrow angle will have the same angular deviation as the image resulting from four reflections in the wide angle. And unlike other images where the same angle derives from different reflection pathways, this will depend on how precisely the 2 to 3 ratio is achieved. And you're not going to get that ratio precise enough to make the collision exact. So I would suggest making it imprecise enough that the collision does not occur at all. This is not so relevant for looking through a plain glass sextant at 90 degrees to your direction of vision because an image resulting from six reflections will be 400 times dimmer than one resulting from four, so it will not significantly interfere with the accuracy of assessing where the edge of the sun is. However, when using the sextant at an angle so that the reflections are brighter, or when using beam splitters, such collisions are best avoided. Also, if the images are precisely equally spaced, then counting becomes more difficult. We're probably going to be able to see up to 25 images, and it's much easier to count down to the one you're watching contact the horizon if there is some variation in the spacing, so there's a recognisable pattern to fit, rather than losing count halfway down. The sextant is calibrated after construction, so the angles have to be fixed, but don't have to be all that precise. One method of determining the angles is to use spaces of known thickness, such as microscope slides, stacked between the open ends of the reflecting glasses while the glue sets. This example was made that way by putting two slides between the first two glasses, then for the third glass turning the sextant over and using three slides. That works fine, assuming you've got something you can use as a spacer that has the right thickness. If you haven't, another method is required. This is mine. Measure the distance between the bench top and the ceiling, and with a bit of simple trigonometry, work out that the spacing on the ceiling of dots separated by the desired angle is the tangent of the angle times the distance to the ceiling. Then draw two lines on a piece of paper separated by this distance and stick it on the ceiling. I use a laser pointer set up like this. It's mounted a couple of feet above the bench. For a spacer I use a piece of baking foil folded over to approximately the desired thickness, in this case 8 fold. Apply the adhesive and assemble the sextant. Adjust the angle between the glasses by moving the folded foil towards and away from the glued edge. Shine the laser pointer onto the sextant and you will see dots on the ceiling. Move the folded foil until the dots are the right distance apart. When the first joint is set, repeat the process with the third glass. This time you'll have more dots on the ceiling and you can move the second angle in order to get the desired dot pattern. If you're using a strongish laser in a dark room you should be able to note and avoid the 3 to 2 ratio collision. As you can imagine this becomes a lot easier when using partially reflective beam splitting glass. Let it set and that's the sextant proper made. I'll turn to the use of beam slitting glass in the next video.